Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, we're going to talk about property drawers, and I'm going to show you how you can customize the way different properties are shown in the inspector. So here we've got an enemy set up. He's got a bunch of different fields on here. One is for an integer. A couple are using a float variable. If you haven't seen the video I did on that, I'll have a link below. Go check it out. But it, the float variable has a very custom property drawer here where we can switch between a variable or a constant value and just kind of toggle back and forth. The integer you can see is just kind of changing the background color. This is a really simple example to kind of get you started and then we'll dive into the property drawer for the, um, the float references and float variables. So let's take a look at how this works. To set up your own property drawer, you need to create a new class. Here I've created an int drawer and the base class needs to be property drawer. On top, you need to add a attribute for custom property drawer and pass in the type of the object that this is um, supposed to draw for. So this is to draw for an integer, so I pass in type of int. Then we need to override the onGUI method and call editorGUI.begin property, pass in the position label and property. And then on the next line, this is where we're creating the label. So at the beginning of my my integer, which is, let's go back into it and take a quick look, right here, my int. This is drawn by this line of code right here, the prefix label. In fact, if I comment this out and save and jump back in, you'll see that now the label, as soon as it recompiles, little spinny thing here finishes, the label should disappear and we'll just have a text. So now we just have a text entry that goes all the way across. So let's go back in, re-enable that. So we get our label back and then look at how we're drawing the field and how I'm changing the color. So to change the color, I'm just calling GUI.BackgroundColor and passing in a new color. And then to draw the actual property field, so just like the default drawing for this field, we just pass in uh, the position and property and a content of none to this editor GUI.property field and then call end property. So that's kind of all we need to really get started with some basic stuff if you want to make some other modifications to the way this draws or add in extra fields or add in buttons or something. This is kind of how you would go about doing it. But now let me jump into the more complicated one where we can see quite a bit more stuff going on. So let's jump back over to the project here and that what we're going to see here is the property drawer for these float variables. And before I do that, I'll just show you real quick how these work. So these variables are set up so you can toggle them as between like being a constant, so I can set it to 100, or I can switch it over and say I want it to be a variable, and then it references a scriptable object down below. So like current health, or I could assign player health. In this case, current HP should be assigned the current HP variable, and then uh, player HP goes into observed health. And then these other ones are just constant values. So how do we do this? How do we draw a thing with a drop down and let you kind of switch between different modes? Let's take a look. We have a float reference here. This is what is on the um, the enemy. If we take a look, the float reference is the type here. And in fact, I'm going to use Shift F12, find all references, and then go right into this float reference drawer. So here you see we do the same thing. A new class, base class is property drawer and we have the custom property drawer and we pass in type of float reference. Now it's important to take another look at this float reference. It does have to be serializable for it to show up. So you need the serializable attribute if you want it to show up in that inspector. Now, how do we kind of modify this and do drop downs and change what we're showing? I think this, this should show you right here. The first thing that I'm doing is getting the property use constant from the float reference. So we call property dot find property relative and we actually have to pass in the name of the property. Not a big fan of this, but I think uh, once everybody switched over to 4.6 and we can just use the name of attribute, it'll be much less of an issue. And then after we find the property, we want the bool value to assign to our use constant here. So the next thing we do is prefix a label out. So just like uh, in the integer, just drawing out a label, nothing special here. You can see it again in the editor. Let's take one more quick glance. Just a normal label. Looks exactly the same as the integer label did before I commented it out. Uh, and then, then we go in and um, create a new rect. And here what I'm doing is creating a rectangle that's at the position and the size is 20 by 20. So I just did vector one times 20. You could just do a new, ve or vector 2.1. You could do a new vector 2, 20, 20, and pass that in too. Uh, this is just the way that I typed it out. But it's just 20 by 20 rect at that point. And what we're gonna use that for 
is this little button here. So that's kind of how this button is coming about. Let's jump back to the code one more time. Now, the next thing we do is call editor GUI drop down button, and we pass in the rectangle. Uh, we get a texture. So if I call into here, you'll see this is where I'm getting the texture. I really just made a method to wrap this animation dope sheet keyframe texture that's already built into the uh, the engine. So it's not some texture that I had to go add in. If you wanted to add in your own texture, you could do that here and just pass back this texture. It just needs to be accessible in the editor in edit mode. And let's go back again. And then the next thing, let's see, focus type of keyboard. No, this is the part we care about. So then we pass in a GUI style where we give it a fixed width and create some sort of a border around it. Uh, the next step, create a generic menu. The menu has two items here. So I call menu.addItem and I pass in the text constant in a GUI content object. And the next parameter that I'm passing in is use constant. This is to tell it whether or not the object is checked or this menu item is checked. So if I hit comma, you'll see, get the IntelliSense and uh, the variable name is on. This is basically whether or not this menu option is the selected one or checked one. And then the last thing I do is pass in a method to call. Now I'm using a, uh, a Lambda here to just call set property, pass in the property name or the property itself, sorry, and then the value. And then in my set property method, we do the same kind of thing that we did before where we uh, find property relative by the string name again. And then here I'm just setting the bool value to the value, so true or false, whatever I passed in. And then calling apply modified properties on the serialized object. This makes it actually do the changes and update it. If you don't have this line in here, your changes aren't going to take place. So let's see, we've got that menu item added here for constant. We add the next menu item here for variables. Exactly the same except our check state right here, whether or not it's enabled, is the opposite of use constant. So if it's not set to use constant, it's variable. This one's on, that one's off. And then in the set property, we pass false because we want to turn use constant off if they switch to variable. And then we call show menu.show as context. So this happens uh, again when they click the drop down button. So this is all within this if statement right here. A Little bit confusing, I think, um, the way this stuff's formatted. Let me actually just kind of uh, adjust this just a little bit so that it looks a little tiny bit more explicit. There we go. So if this, I don't like that either. There, maybe like that, there we go. I think that's a little bit easier to read. So. If they click on this drop down button, we give them this menu and we show it. Now, if they don't click on the drop down menu or we go past that part, the next thing that we need to do is show the actual um, the property. So again, so far we've shown the label, we've shown the button, and we've set up the drop downs for the menu. But the property rendering either as a link here, a reference to a scriptable object, or as a text editable field, that's not done yet. So let's see how we do that. So if use constant is set to true, so basically we're just typing in a number, it's pretty simple, right? It's gonna be much like uh, what we did before, except here we need to, well, here, let's just go over it. So we call uh, editor GUI.text field and just create a new text field for this object, or, or sorry, for, for the value here. Then I parse out the value, so we take the string representation of the text parse it with float.tryparse out into the value right here. And then we call property.findPropertyRelative again, get that property. And here we set the float value to the value. Now we can't just do the um, kind of the, the basic one that you saw in the int drawer here with property field because the property would be for the entire property, not for that one sub property on there. So again, here we just wanna update the constant value of the float reference. Let me just go to that one more time just to make this really kind of stand out. So our, our property is of this float reference right here. But the thing that we're modifying is another, it, it's actually not a property, it's a field, but we're, we're modifying this field on the, um, the float reference, this constant value. So that again is why we have find property relative. Kind of interesting though that it finds a field and it's named find property. Eh. Whatever. Um, anyway, so if we're not using a constant though, we actually have a slightly easier 
thing to set up. All we need to do is call editor GUI dot object field and pass in position and the property find property relative again for the variable. Now we could also do um, in, in place of this, I believe we could just do an editor GUI dot property field and um, pass in that integer value too. And then it would get the, the normal formatting for int property drawers, I believe. Um, but anyway, at the end of it, all we have to do is call editor GUI dot end property and we're done. So that's pretty much everything that's involved in, uh, in making this work. There's really nothing else to it for the property drawing. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with property drawing. Um, like I said, one of the videos I shared semi-recently was with like Odin Inspector, which really takes advantage of property drawing. It does a whole bunch of other stuff, but it does a lot of really nice custom property drawing. And um, most bigger games, games with a decent sized design team where it's not just all programmers, you'll see a good amount of property drawers and custom editors kind of in there just to make things easier for your design team. And that's, that's kind of the whole point of this. Editor customization is to make things easier for design and for engineering and art as well. But primarily in my experience, mostly just make it easier for design, make them more productive, make everybody more productive and you know, make your experience with Unity just a lot more fun. So if you like the video, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want the source for this, um, just toss me an email. I'd be happy to, to send it over to you. And um, don't forget to share and all that stuff. And thanks for watching.